Good morning, YouTube. Today, I'm gonna to introduce you to my next project vehicle. So are you recording all of the nefarious activities? If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan, and this is my garage, and this channel is all about the supercar ownership experience. And one of the things that I like to do on this channel every once in a while is a project car. So we've done a few. I've got a 599 that we're converting into a manual transmission right now. But that project's been, well, troubling. It's taken a lot longer than I expected, so, that tied up an awful lot of my money, and it made it so I really had not much ability to go buy a bunch of other stuff. Let's just say my wife is not real happy that this thing's taken, getting close to a year, you know, let's be real. And it was only supposed to take like a month or two. So because of the extended duration of the 599 project, I decided to pursue another project and well, this one's a little bit different. So before we go too far, just real quick, if you need any supercar parts or services, go visit my website, normalguysupercar.com. There you can use the code NGS10. It takes off 10% almost everything in the store. So thank you so much to all of you that do that. That supports this channel. That is literally my job is to do those things. So thank you so much to all of you that have bought stuff in the past and to those of you that are gonna buy stuff in the future. Well, let's go get the project car. Well, I guess cars may be a bit of the wrong term. You'll see. Anyway, we gotta tow it home. So. Let's go tow this thing. Okay, it's hooked up in a trailer at home and we'll show you. So take a pause and put in the comments below before you see it, what do they buy? Well, there's a saying I know a lot of you have heard which says the happiest day in a boat owner's life is the day they buy the boat and the day they sell that boat. Well, today is one of the happiest days of my life because I have joined the stupidity ranks of boat ownership. Yes, we have a 1995 Fountain 24 CS with a 502 Mer Cruiser engine. And it needs a lot of work. <laughs> so let me let me show you everything that's good and mostly bad about my horrible decision and all of the stuff that we're gonna do to this boat to make it better. And then you know drive it around and, and do dumb stuff with it too, because that's awesome. Well, there it is, and of course I had to get red. So you know, I just I felt like Having red, you know, like with the truck and all the red Ferraris and stuff just makes it look kind of epic. So like, yeah, look at that. That actually looks really cool. In fact, that's gonna be my thumbnail. Well, here's the good news. Came with the trailer and the trailer is actually in pretty good condition. Uh, not a whole lot wrong with it. The surge brakes work correctly. The lights work. The winch on this works. A little tiny bit of rust, but I mean, you know, it's a trailer. But overall, the paint's in pretty okay condition. The fenders are slightly, just slightly beat up, but not real bad. Even the, the marker poles are in good shape. They actually clearly have replaced the lights with LEDs because they're very, very, very bright. Oh yeah, we do need new tires. Yes, the front tires of these are completely dry rot so if you look yeah that's in terrible shape I actually bought new tires we're gonna get those put on later this week rear tires are okay so we don't have to worry about the rear tires probably need to put a little air in them to look a little flat I need to check the air pressure I haven't done that yet yeah let's take a look at this I'm gonna go with glorious although it might be a horrible piece of machinery brand new prop yeah so that's in good shape the prop is in good shape I actually don't know the threat or the pitch of it but you know we could find that out later. Basically, everything works for the most part. Hydraulics work, steering works, engine works, uh, electronics work, stereo is kind of messed up. We need to fix that. There's two glaringly obvious problems with the boat when you first walk up. The first one is the condition of the paint is, well, it's atrocious. The boat is supposed to be red and uh, well, you can see it looks kind of more like a pink. So the gel coat in the fiberglass is completely faded. Uh, it looks really bad up here. Like it doesn't come out as bad on camera as it looks in person, but it's a basically pink, not really red. And it's supposed to be a bright, beautiful red. That's the original color. And it's supposed to have a bright shine. And right now it's just kind of like, looks like chalk. It looks like someone took a bag of chalk and just threw it on the boat. You can see that we were kind of rubbing it really hard earlier with just our finger and it starts to clean up the paint. So we're fairly confident we're gonna be able to buff this thing out and use an oxidation remover and some other stuff. It'll probably take us quite a lot of time but we think we can get it to shine again. And so we wanna do a really thorough job. We're thinking we're gonna even pull off all the trim, 
all of the metal pieces, everything. So moving along, not quite as big a problem, but the windshield does have some like cracking in it it's kind of well it's hard to see in camera again until you look at it from an angle it looks like uh, there you can kind of see it up at the top of the screen it's, yeah there you go see how it's kind of like spidering and stuff yeah there there yeah it's not looking so good so that piece i don't know if that can be restored or not i think it might be able to hopefully it can if so that's what we're gonna do Okay, but let's move inside and I'll show you what the bigger problem is. All right, we're in the interior. Dashboard's not too bad, steering wheel's in good shape. A couple of the gauges are, well, you can't even really see in there. I think they might be able to be cleaned up. It's so like this one, I don't think it's an original gauge. I think it's been replaced. Uh, these ones look pretty decent, but like, look at that. You can't even really see in there. Those two gauges are really bad but uh, clearly that switch has been replaced. This trim switch is kind of like falling apart. That needs to be replaced. But here you go, here's the problem. Oh yeah, look at this seat. It is, yeah, the vinyl is in pretty bad situation down here. It's really cracked and clearly got some sun damage. Same thing over here, although not quite as bad. But then we move to the back seat and well, I mean, that's like duct tape, right? We have a duct tape seat, yeah. So the vinyl's just gone, and then it's just totally cracked all along here, and even the sun deck is all kinda, well, it's all split, so the all the stitching has gone, and well, it's all faded. So even if I could like restore this, which you probably can, I mean, it's, it's split there, it's, you know, yeah. It needs some work. A lot of the side pieces are in okay shape and actually underneath cubby or cabin or whatever, that's actually in good shape. Uh, all of that, very good shape, so that's great. Carpet actually is pretty good shape too. It needs to be cleaned up, but pretty good shape. So let's take a look under the hood. All right, so we pull this cover off and we expose the batteries. Yeah, there's two, two big old batteries. You can see we got like some other stuff. There's like a, that's the exhaust exhaust solenoid. Uh, right there's my, my light bar in the back underneath the seats. Okay, so we gotta turn on the master disconnect, which is uh, down there. There we go, let's kick it over two notches. And now uh, we got some battery juice, okay. And you can see, GPS thing turned on. Well, we're gonna open up the rear hatch and the hydraulics still work. That's kinda cool, huh? And so once that's up, you can actually see that's what the red is supposed to look like. That paint should look like that. So hopefully we can get this chalky white crap to look like that. But here we go. Yes, we have a 502 Mercruiser EFI engine. Yes, this is awesome. It needs a bit of a tune-up. It's not quite running right. I'm not exactly sure what's going on we think it's got a little bit of a misfire but we think we're gonna be able to take care of it the good news is if you didn't know these mercruisers that's just a chevy yeah we're looking at a 502 big block chevy so getting parts all that sort of stuff super easy to deal with that's the awesome thing and we can like get parts pretty much anywhere that's glorious that makes me so very very happy and also what's kind of cool is the oil filter right there uh, water separator right there. So that's pretty cool. We can get access to all that sort of stuff very, very easily. Oh, hey, look, we have an anchor. That's kind of nice. And a couple ropes. Yeah, I haven't even really been looking around. So if you didn't know, that is actually supposed to be a uh, ballast tank. So right there's another one. Yeah, you can actually pump in ballast water and get the boat to squat more. Uh, right over here, you can see we have the hour gauge. Kind of hard to read, but it says we have 488 hours on the motor. It has not been rebuilt. So that's actually not too bad. I've heard these Mercruisers can go about a thousand or so before needing to rebuild, sometimes even 1500. Although 
that might be pushing it. Unfortunately, I don't have the equipment to run the engine when it's not in the water. So you have to hook up a system to actually pump water through the engine to cool it because you know it doesn't actually have any of its own coolant. So I can't really start it up. They say not to do it even for brief moments of time and it's kind of late and well, it's really loud. It's awesome. It sounds so awesome. I can't wait to show you guys that. So we're gonna have to start up in another video. I'm sorry to tease you like that. It sounds pretty glorious. Currently the plan is not really to muck with the engine too much other than do a tune. So we need to get new spark plugs. We need to probably clean it up a bit and maybe even injectors. I think maybe we need a fuel pump. So check this out. Everything else works. So we have the ballast pumps. Those work. The horn, well, I can hear the relay doesn't work. Uh, bilge pump works, it kicks on automatically. Blowers, those work. We got panel lights, uh, you can see my gauge is turned on, although not that one. Uh, anchor light, uh, wherever that is. Nav lights, uh oh, I don't think that's working. We have to fix that. Cabin light, nope. I don't see any cabin lights coming on yet, that's not working. Cockpit. Ooh, we have red. Check that out. Oh, we have red lights. That's funny. Okay. And engine compartment lights. Oh, yep. Yeah, we got lights down here. That's kind of nice. Oh, and then the best switch right here, exhaust valve. So yeah, that opens the exhaust valve. That closes it. That right there. Yes. That is awesome. All the trims work. So if we do the trims, you can see. Both trims work. Yep, yeah, nice. The trim here works as well. Yeah, you gotta get just right to get that there. So those are working. Uh, fire extinguisher down there. We got some speakers. We actually do have a stereo, but here's the weird thing. The stereo is hooked up jankity with this like cluster of wires. So um, we need to redo that and then we could get that stereo to work. Pretty sweet. So we took it out on a test drive earlier today to kind of make sure everything works before we bought it. And <laughs> it got up to over 60 miles an hour pretty quickly. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. <laughs> like I have to say going that fast in a boat is a little bit scary. So if you didn't know, this boat is actually kind of rare. They only made supposedly something like 99 of them. The other interesting thing is it's not a traditional like cigarette boat style where it's like the, like a deep V that kind of is meant to go like offshore and stuff. This is actually a hybrid hull. It's a flat bottom with a shallow V in the front. So it was Fountain's attempt at kind of making like a multi-purpose boat so it can haul ass on a lake yet still tow like a skier or, you know, wakeboard or probably not some well a wakeboarder, but like a skier or a tube, you know, kind of be like more of like a family boat. Although, I mean, you can see the cockpit's like pretty tiny. You can only fit five people or so. So I don't think you're really going to be doing the family thing. Well, there you have it. There's the next project vehicle. I know it's not a Ferrari or even a car, but I think it's pretty badass. So like I know a boat stands for bust out another thousand. I know that joke and it's kind of true, but here was actually a bit of my logic. We kind of guesstimated what we think we're gonna put into this boat to get it fixed up. And I should clarify, I'm actually partnered with a friend. So it's not just me buying this thing. We actually partnered up and uh, that's helping defer the cost because part of our theory was we're not going to use the boat all that much. So might as well have two of us own it so then it gets more use. No reason for me to just buy this alone. So we added up the total investment for this thing. We think that we're going to have in it. It still costs less than simply doing a conversion on my 599. So, I mean, yes, it's expensive and yes, it's a money pit, but it's actually relatively speaking, not a ridiculous money pit compared to some of the other things I play with because, well, we're in the world of working on Ferraris and, well, those are never cheap. I mean, it's got a Chevy. Like, it can't be that expensive. I mean, yeah, there's gonna be some parts of it that are very expensive. You know, like they were saying, the new props, a thousand bucks. But, I mean, a thousand bucks. In the scheme of working on Ferraris, my math sensors were like 650 bucks. So yeah, I mean, those are just math sensors. I mean, we could probably buy a total new crate engine for this thing for like 10 grand. Certainly could find a used one for that much. So the operating costs of it are gonna be kind of pricey. I mean, it doesn't exactly get good gas mileage or gas consumption per hour or whatever they use. It's got a 70 gallon fuel tank. So, I mean, yeah, you gotta put in a boatload of fuel. So overall though, 
I'm pretty pleased with this. I think we're gonna have to put some effort into just getting it cleaned up first. So we're gonna do a bunch of work on it. We also have some ideas for modifications. We think we wanna get rid of all of the chrome trim and go to black, like anodize everything black so that the whole thing's black and red and then white interior, including like the fountain logo. We're thinking instead of being this gold, make it black and then get this painted black. I think that would look really, really cool. We're definitely considering that. Even like this, get this trimmed out in black, get these trimmed out in black, get everything trimmed down in black. I think that would look really, really cool. So, and kind of like repaint the, the trim tabs. So I think overall we can make this thing look really, really badass and have a lot of fun working on it and playing with it. And then the goal is to sell it. So this will be for sale once we get it cleaned up and then one of you can own it. Well, that's it. That's all I got for now. So. We will obviously be doing a lot of work on this boat, so you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned if you wanna see this, although it's not car stuff, but it's still gonna be pretty sweet. Mm -hmm.